Today we're going to talk about something that's really important, why most people don't make money online, or I should say big money, and I will be very specific, and the things you can do to change that. First thing is I have been making money online since 2000 in some capacity. I've always used online marketing and advertising. I have not participated in certain things ways to make money that are very tertiary because Google's going to change the algorithm. YouTube's going to change the algorithm. Facebook's going to change the algorithm. I've, I've kind of worked on some things from a different angle. I'm going to start this off like this. When you see someone online saying something, you should challenge it. You should challenge me. You should challenge anyone. First part is the reason people don't make a lot of money, a big money online is the lack of accepting the truth. The truth is that some people are better than you. The truth is that you may pay, you, more than likely you need to pay for education. The truth is it's not going to be easy. The truth is it's going to take a lot of hard work. The truth is you need to dedicate yourself to a pursuit. This goes contrary to a lot of the marketing that says it's going to be easy. It's going to be overnight. The best thing I have for you who need to make money right now, you don't, you can't wait two months or three months or four months, which is pretty fast to have a business get off the ground, start making money, start a service business. But for those of you who want to do an online business of any kind, it's usually going to take much longer than you think. God, I wish I was doing now what I know in 2000. 2000, there wasn't as much competition. There was so many ways to make money because it was all new. Email, 2000, if someone sent you an email, you, you, you read it because it was like someone sent you an email. You know, it was wow. So it was easier, even though we didn't know it was easier because we didn't know what was to come. We didn't know how much the internet was going to become really crowded. Typically, if you're going to build a business online, another thing that you will have to realize if you want to make, make money online is you're going to have to continue to educate yourself with people far smarter than you are. If you're that person who you think you know it all, if you're that person you think that your way is the best way, the only way, and you're going to ignore larger trends in technology, you'll make money. I'm not going to say you won't make money, but you won't make big money. I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes that, you know, my benchmark, a livable income, when I talk to you and all this stuff is predicated on you making enough money to pay your mortgage, buy cars outright, save money for retirement, uh, send your kids to school or write a check if that's what you want to do, or they don't have to, uh, student loans. That's the kind of money I'm talking about. I'm not talking about making an extra 600 bucks a month, which is great because for some people, 600 bucks a month extra is the difference between starving and not starving. So I'm not going to marginalize that money. The focus here is to get people to enough money where you can live the life you want, make money online. Because some of the uh, fuckery, internet fuckery, is if they put a product and you make $30 online, you've made money online. It's done what it was supposed to do and it didn't lie, you weren't scammed. But to move the conversation to a different spot, to really educate people here, you got to have some organization. And if your business grows to a certain point, you're not going to be able to work at home because you're going to need staff. Now, I know Tim Ferriss, uh, four hour work week. I know all this stuff now. I, and this is just some things that, you know, since I started making money on 2000, I've been making money consistently. There has not been a year that I have not made money online since 2000 to 2016. I'm not doing technology. I'm not building apps. You know, if you're building an app based business or certain things, you can have people around the world. You can have a developer in Switzerland who's working on your app here. But when you're doing the service business, and that's what this is, you know, the services, education, uh, the services, consulting, it's going to take a different kind of animal the way that I see it. Uh, G double picked up, never broke, love it. Letting the haters be the motivators. <laughs> that's funny. You can make really good what I consider side income. And I'm going to give you some numbers. 25,000 extra a year, 50,000, under 100 Gs a year from home is very possible. It's very real. There's no fluff. If you do the work, you can make that kind of money. To me, just to me, 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 that's side money. Because now if you're out in uh, Kokomo, Kokomo, Indiana, and you got a $30,000 a year job and you make 100,000 online from your business, you're balling. So a lot of that's really dependent upon where you live and how much stuff costs, such as housing. So you could be balling out if you're in like Tupelo, Mississippi, or if you are in, you know, certain places of the country, a hundred G's is large money in the city of Atlanta. Not really. New York, you're struggling. Uh, California, you got roommates. You got roommates on 100 G's. For a more general description, anything 
online from home under 100K, I consider side money, but that may be something different for you. So that's kind of the benchmark. Now, big money is 300K and up. You know, you're doing 300K online. I don't care where you are in the world. You are doing very, very well. And a lot of people don't do 300K a year. And a lot of people don't even do 100K a year. Uh, I'm going to tell you the story of Tupelo was a guy in a lot of groups. And he was just talking about his, his uh, online success and stuff. And if you're, you know, if you're in certain groups with me, you know, I don't really post that much. You know, it's just don't have the time. But I do observe. I see everything. And Tupelo was posting and giving noobs all kinds of stuff. And I, one day I just got curious and I creeped on over to Tupelo's Facebook page. And I, I started reading stuff. And that was my first real corporate job. I did telesales. Both of these things required a ton of research, a lot of research. So I automatically go into research mode, right? So I'm on Tupelo's page and I'm researching, researching. And I'm like, you could tell how big a house is by the bedrooms. When you start to see the bedroom is massive, that's usually a good indicator of how big that house is. Um, bathrooms, you know, because Tupelo has kids. He's around there with the kids. Kitchen is looking lovely, like some out of home and garden. I'm like, all right, your kung fu pretty good, Tupelo. And then I'm creeping, 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 creeping. And then I see his wife, doctor's coat, and she has MD behind her name. And I'm like, oh, shit. Some more creeping. Tupelo is a stay-at-home dad. Nothing wrong with being a stay-at-home dad. If I ever have any more kids, I'd probably be a stay-at-home dad myself. But the reality is he didn't have to make any money and he didn't have to pay any real bills because Tupelo's wife, and I don't know their agreement, but essentially after some research, the money that was paying for that stuff came from Tupelo's wife, not Tupelo's online business, which would explain why he had so much time to be in these groups. Whether he made any money or not, the bills were going to be paid. Most of us are not in that situation. That's why it's so hard for people to make money online because you're trying to make money online. You're trying to support yourself. You're trying to pay your student loans. You're trying to pay your car payment. And oh, if you're married with kids, it's just challenging. But you have these people here. And I'm not going to say Tupelo, Tupelo never really lied. He didn't say my wife's a doctor, but he didn't say, well, one of the reasons I'm able to do this is because she's a doctor. So it was kind of, to me, lies of a mission. And there's a lot of people that if you kind of creep on their Facebook page and Instagram and kind of look at their situation, You'll get a better understanding of why they are where they are. Hello, can a startup? <laughs> I'm up. Uh, you're amazing. I appreciate that. I Roberto D Row never broke action pack is phenomenal product for a nominal price, which is basically phenomenally free. Hashtag Kung, Kung Fu value. I appreciate that D Row. No, I didn't pay her to say that or him. I don't even know. Uh, Kayla Rose, good to know. Uh, Vlogs for Kelly. I own a moving company that nets me forty thousand a year, but in New York, that don't even handle my. Like I said, I mean, that's, that's, that's the reality where you live. Like if you're in New York, you're in California, I shouldn't say easy. I should say doable internet income. You can do 60 to 100K online, work from home, not have an employee. You could do that. That's very, very possible depending on how hard you want to work, what you're doing, and your resource. Today, that's just not the money it was in 2000. It's just not. Yeah, you do 100K in Alabama, CJ Lee, because, you know, I grew up in Alabama from Birmingham. If I was to live in Birmingham now doing 100K, that's pretty much balling out. Part of the reason that you have all of this hustler porn is segment of online money making is online marketing because everyone who sells anything online, whether it's an information product or it's a physical product, you're going to need marketing. So everyone who sells marketing courses, how to do webinars, uh, how to evaluate clients, how to sell all this stuff up, they do really well. So a lot of people have jumped on that. And that's how everyone has what's called the hero's story, the hero's journey. Like, I wish I had some sad music to play. Six months ago, I was sleeping on my friend's sofa. I was really disgusted with myself. I had no pot to piss in, no window to throw it out of. Then I found Scooby-Doo Magic 8-6 program, and now I've got a Ferrari. I mean, all right, there's some people's hero stories that are true. In my opinion, most of that bullshit online is manufactured. The reality is, and this is my true story, is I was in a very fucked up place many years ago. And I didn't get out of it in six months. I didn't get out of it in 12 months. I didn't get out of it in 18 months. It took me damn near three years to get out of it. Many people are being sold hope. And they're being, you know, it's uh, online evangelism for online marketing. Uh, I'll let y'all, uh, you know, I'll lift up the veil. I'll, I'll lift up the curtain. Like, this things I'm doing, I do these to make money. 
and I've made really good money doing this and I'm not using paid traffic. And one of the reasons I'm not using paid traffic and all of these platforms are changing so fast now. I mean, it's, 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 it's mind blowing how fast it's changed. YouTube has done not one, not two, but three algorithm updates in the last six months that I have felt and seen the change. It's my last six months, three. So one of the changes, and you know, I'll just, with paid traffic, I've used paid traffic since 2012. I used to rank videos with paid traffic. I used to get videos recommended and ranked with paid traffic. That's much harder to do now. And also they punish you if you do it. I've kind of like destroyed the business and kind of went down to the, you know, to the ground and just using the best assets. And I'm actually getting back on that upward incline. And I tell you this because this is something a lot of folks won't tell you when their businesses start to go sideways. Because if you're not accumulating knowledge all of the time, you're not going to make it online. You're not going to make big money online. You might get, you may hit a home run. You may be that one hit wonder. You'll come out with a product or service. You will not do any of the stuff online. You'll do it your way and you'll make a lot of money. I've seen that. And every one of those people I've seen, they've had, it's been real hard for the follow-up. It's called like the freshman jinx, that first product, then they can make no more money. I came out with my first hit, which was making money A to Z with self storage and auctions. Then I had another hit after that, Craigslist, uh, hustling, you know, pimping Craigslist for fun and profit. Then I had another hit, uh, you know, hustler, hustlers kung fu, not hustlers kung fu, the hustler mindset project. Then I had another hit, hustlers kung fu. And I'm going to have some more hits because I will do the work. And part of the work is understanding that the importance of relationships online. We were having this conversation in a group where, and most of this, and I'll just say most of this money is coming from people who've been around a while. I've got clients, customers who literally have bought every product that I've made in the last seven years. So I know the importance of relationships but from a business standpoint. If you bring someone in, and this is pretty much what's called inbound marketing, you bring someone in and they stay for years and they spend money years after years, that's called lifetime value of a customer. Woo! You know, like they say on the football field when that guy hit him, woo! If you can bring every customer in and repeat that cycle, you can become a billionaire. That's how important relationships are. And I have people in there, I, everyone doesn't want a relationship. No one, I was just sitting there like, oh my God. And when I hear that stuff, and the thing with relationships just isn't online, relationship business was very much a big relationship business, relationship building was very much a big part of my success selling office furniture. It, it's just very important, whether it's in your personal life, whether it's in your business life, relationship building, and the people who can build coalitions and relationships, they'll rule the world. I, I, I was just like, okay, don't, don't get cranky in here. Don't get cranky because see, when you start saying stuff like, well, you know, I've been doing this shit for 17 years and I see that you started last week. That's when people start getting angry and, you know, this and your nasty grams and stuff. And I don't want any nasty grams. Uh, Atlanta seems like a great city that's least expensive. Mm, not exactly true. Atlanta, the city is very small. The more desirable areas, and I'm just going to, I'm going to just give you the arc. You, you have Atlanta, then you kind of move over to East Atlanta and Kirkwood and Inman Park. And those are some very nice uh, historical type homes. And, but the real money, it's consistently been in similar neighborhoods. Like you go to, you know, cause money used to be downtown Atlanta. Then it moved to Midtown. Then it's like Midtown, Buckhead. Then it kind of swoops over to West Paces Ferry. But there's this arc of money. Um, Fulton County, the Sandy Springs, I kind of live, I live like, I'm around the line of Sandy Springs, Chastain Park. You know, the neighborhood's considered Chastain Park. I'm in a neighborhood that succeeded from Fulton County because there's so much money here that they would not want to be paying taxes to support the less well healed people on the South side. So depending on where you want to live and how you want to live, I mean, there's a new old condo places, new apartments going up. The rent's 2,500 bucks a month, like, you know, about four miles away, 2,500. So it really depends on how you want to live. You, can you get some, can you get a banging ass house up in uh, Gwinnett County? You know, four or five bedrooms, sit on an acre for 250. Yeah, you can do that all day long. There's a lot of places, but 
the job that you need to support that mortgage is going to be downtown. <laughs> You're going to have to drive 30, 45 minutes, an hour. Uh, Benny Draws, do you think Ty Lopez, whoever his name is, full of shit? No, I don't. I think he's a brilliant marketer. Josh Barr, how do real heroes come back fake heroes? You know what? It's like, it's hard because part of the problem is people want to believe in the dream more so than the reality. So if the fake you know, hustler porn comes along and you're sitting there demoralized or your life isn't the way that you want it. It's very easy for you to be seduced by that stuff. Like, you know, young girls at the bus, you know, at the bus station or the train station and the pimp shows up and, hey, here's a Snickers bar. It's not a Snickers bar. That Snickers bar is like a steak to somebody who is who is physically and emotionally hungry. And there are many people who are physically and emotionally hungry. And that's why hustler porn works so well to the point that people feel that if it's not hustler porn like, somehow it's a scam, even though the hustler porn is a scam. People battling me on a time tested business principle. If you build relationships and you treat people really well, you'll make money. That ain't fake. That ain't hustler porn. That's real. Here's the problem with that. It takes a lot of time. There's someone, a few people that I'm building relationships because I'm going to need something from them. I know this. And it's going to take me probably a year to get in good, which means I'll be talking to them. I'll be like, hey, let's do lunch. I'm the one pushing and driving because I'm building the relationship because I want something. But I can't ask for shit right now. I won't be able to ask for shit for about maybe a year, but I got to do the work now. That's the problem. There's no immediate gratification. Also, the relationship could go off the rails. I could do all of this work and, you know, relationship building, and then they just like, poof, they could turn to an asshole. So there are no guarantees. This frightens people. Kayla Rose, Glenda, how can I find your new advanced business YouTube channels? Well, up. I watched the deleting my subscribers' videos. If you're meant to find it, and I know this sounds really, really jacked up, and it's, I'm doing this for a reason. Making money online means you need to have a very, very strong audience. Lukewarm audiences or okay audiences. In the past, they didn't buy, but they didn't hurt you. So, you know, big list, a lot of people didn't buy, no problem. Today, you have a lot of people like that in your tribe, on your list. It's going to hurt you from your money standpoint. It's going to hurt you from the way that your email list operates. It's going to hurt you from the way that YouTube, uh, Facebook, all of these platforms, algorithms will treat you. So, you're better off with a small raving audience than a large group of people like, eh, I'm okay. Oh, today is, you don't want that. So you'll, if it's meant for you, you'll find it. Um, Boxing Beats Life. Hey, Glennon, what is your thought process of selecting your images for your videos? Um, I made the decision to turn this into a media company, so I started to act like a media company. Uh, instead of doing what everyone else is doing, because I'm building something that's real different. And also, I cheat. And when I say I cheat, if you do Facebook advertising, they penalize you for having text on your ads, right? And I'm like, why do they penalize you for having text on your ads? YouTube has the click-through rate on images, but they don't tell you that stuff. You have to go ahead and go into um, Google AdWords and see how your stuff's performing. You have to do your split A-B testing there. Why does Facebook not want you to have images, you know, words and text on your images? They have spent a lot of money and they know that that shit doesn't convert as well. They know this. They won't tell you exactly what it is, but I've noticed that there's a lot of science with that. I've noticed that Apple does the same thing. Apple doesn't have a lot of text on his images. Apple has clean. If you look at the bigger successful companies, you start to see similar processes. And Apple's been doing this a long time. Apple was doing it before Facebook. So with me selecting my images, I'm into imagery, you know, I'm into, you know, this is just something different. It's actually working because there's subliminal messages in those images. That's how I pick them. That's, that's the thought process. Soren Tapper, you and Grant Cardone are the only guys on the internet that don't include a lot of fluff in your message. Uh, Grant has built a real business. Grant had a real training company going around teaching car dealerships, salespeople how to sell more cars. He would travel. He's built a real business and Grant gets a little cranky. You know, it's it's like the tranny effect. You know, you've been tranny rise. You think that's a pretty girl, but is that a banana in your pocket? I mean, that that's the whole thing. You know, until it's too late, until you're too in too deep, that's when you don't realize you've been tranny rise. 
Uh, James Scott, 1,000 true fans. Yep. You're better off, especially going with to, you know, anyone doesn't know what James is talking about, Google 1,000 true fans. Because the way that these platforms work now, you need people who are deeply vested in your message, your product and service. Because the lukewarm people will hurt you, especially on YouTube. Uh, Roger Collins, what's up, Glendon? Great ass content. Got to take down my text images on my ads. I totally, I mean, dude, it's just, I just looked at that and that's why there's no text on my thumbnails. Now i just took it off and it sometimes takes me 30 minutes to pick, to pick a thumbnail. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. You know, with the whole thing of people not making money, uh, some of the things you got to do is rid yourself over the fact that, you know, the hope, I should say the hope that it will be fast, rid yourself of this notion that somehow if you don't make money real quick you've been scammed and rid yourself of the notion of talking you know, this this is the thing and when i network with people locally who want to be online or digital citizens they always say the same thing i want to do what you want to do because you know i don't meet most of my clients I, I i do everything here in in the back cave right and they want that because they've got to go to conferences and stuff to meet people, yet they consider themselves tech online business people when it's really a challenge to be 100% online and make big money. Not so much a challenge to be a tech person and make 30,000 or under 100. You, I mean, seriously, if you do the work, you, you pick your niche or whatever you want to do, you do the work, it's very possible for you to make six figures. It's very, very possible. That's very, very real. And a lot of people can do that. But when you start getting beyond that, the game changes quite a bit. David Boyd, like the 90-10, or some people call the 80-20, uh, the Pareto principle, most revenue comes from a very small segment. Yeah. And if you and read this book, I don't have it. It's upstairs. As a uh, matter of fact, it's screen share time because if I don't do this, I will have people uh, emailing me months later. Actually, I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna do y'all a solid. I'm gonna do y'all a solid. Jay Abraham's getting everything you can out of all you've got. Um, you can get in paperback. I guess he's selling it on his site. I'll give Jay a little love because this is a very this is a book he wrote years ago. It's a very good book. It talks about business principles. It talks about talking to people, and he does not talk about making a whole bunch of money fast. He talks about making. I think he's his I think his consulting has helped companies move something like 30 billion. Yes, 30 billion in products. 30 building. And he's very much on relationship building. So uh, let's see. And will it take you to the Amazon site? Let's see where it takes you. Okay, you can do it there. So you can do it there. Or you can go to let's see. Go here. That's Jay's site. And you can go here and get a used copy. Oh, so I'm going to make some recommendations because I get this. Getting everything you can, all you got. Good book to get. Get this book and get this book The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. You get those two, you will be winning. You will be winning, winning, winning. So check them out. You know, that way, I don't. Have James uh, just read the one by Perry Marshall, J. Abraham. Yeah. So that that's one of the big things. That's uh, why so many people don't make money because they believe in myths and fairy tales. Uh, Mr. Safety forever listening to pimping your mind for success for the second time. Thanks. Sure. Appreciate it. Uh, a big part of this is this insistence. This unshakable belief that you're going to make millions of dollars and not work that hard. Um, Ramit Sethi, when he was building his business, he worked like a maniac. He worked like a maniac. Um, Pat Flynn, if you catch his early stuff, he worked more than he let on. He worked a lot harder than he let on. That's kind of one of my things with Pat. I like Pat. He puts out a lot of information, but he was working much harder than people think he was. And he let them believe that. Um, that that was, you know, that's another thing because people will see someone like 
pat and go like, he's very much like me. He did it. I can do it. And that's not wrong to be inspired, but like, uh, you know, Mr. Tupelo and his MD wife. And I see that stuff all the time where people don't really tell you because this is another reason that so many kids are starting businesses and doing so well. You're 16 or 22 and you live at home. You have no mortgage. You have no rent. Shit. If your parents, you know, even though your parents say you need to chip in and you don't, they still going to feed you. No mortgage, no rent. They're feeding you. Oh, you're on mom and dad's health insurance. You are essentially, that's one of the, the time where you could do so much because you just don't have adult bills. Say they, you know, your parents make you pay your cell phone bill or your car note. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You still got a lot of time and money more than someone who is 100% self-reliant and independent. Uh, Rugged Collars, I'm curious to find out more and more of my customers that are giving me numbers to call them to finish the order. Should I implement this at one man? Uh, Rugged Collars, if you take someone's phone number and hire someone and will essentially set up appointments for them to talk to your customers and you like call them up and once you have them on the phone and say, hey, you know, we have this one time offer and this is a little crazy, but we have this diamond encrusted dog collar. Would you be interested in something like that? If you sell one a month, that's going to make up for that person doing all that. When you get someone on the phone, you get way more information than online. People do not fully fill out surveys like you would hope unless they're anonymous. Um, it's very hard to beat a phone conversation even today. David Boyd, I'm a fan of efficiency like this or Jack Welch's famous strategy of culling Six Sigma. <laughs> 10 percent of the workforce removing poor performers, just like you removing the less dedicated viewers. I mean, it, it's the reality because it, it bites you in the ass. It's the strangest thing. It's just, it's kind of funny you bring it up, David, because the platforms are forcing you to have some type of Six Sigma program or they're forcing you, and this isn't a bad thing, to create better content and better engagement. They're forcing you because if you don't do it, you're not going to win. The days of being like the reply girls, if anyone remembers that, where these girls would like just sit there, ooh, and, they, and boobs are like, you know, popping out of their turtleneck. And you just, ooh, I, I saw this video. And essentially, you know, it's just the thumbnail of them and their big titties. You know, they're really getting rid of that stuff. And it's funny. And a lot of the changes on YouTube are for the better. It's just when you are accustomed to doing something a certain way and you don't do it that way any longer, you know, it's, I mean, I've been running this channel the same way since 2009 to 2014-ish, pretty much the same. This new thing, it won't work. It just won't work. You can adapt an online form like you are able to do on the phone conversation. Actually, you can. They have, uh, but the shit's not, the shit's super expensive. I mean, it's expensive. There is a way that you can program an app, or a, and it will recommend and it will give you certain things. But I mean, we're talking five hundred thousand million dollars for that. So. Yeah, you can you can hire 10 people to get on the phone and make more money before you even implement something like that. And then once you get it, then you got to test it, build it and teach it how to act. So, yeah, the phone call, you know, from stake of um, most people, you can't you can't adapt on a lot of phone. It's just that that software is just out of the reach of most people. But with that saying. With. Minority Report. If you remember the movie, you hadn't seen the movie, go watch it on Netflix, if it's on Netflix. And there's a scene, spoiler alert, where he's walking and they recognize him and they're pitching him products. It's somewhat like retargeting, but they're pitching him products based on previous purchases and who he is. The, the stuff in the future is going to be very much into that type of programming, that type of technology, biomedical, chemistry, because we've kind of tapped out on certain kind of tech, you know, like if you saw my video while I'm not buying a new MacBook Pro. And so they do some way, more, some way more exciting stuff. I don't really see the need for me to move forward when the older equipment do, will do what I want and more. 
so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, let's see. I, I mean, this is there's a lot of stuff. And for YouTube and Facebook, there's going to be some of these features because you're going to touch your screen. It's going to get your fingerprint. I mean, a lot, a lot of stuff's coming, but back on point. The best way to make money online is to run a lot of experiments. I know that sounds really crazy because, you know, you should like pick one thing and dedicate yourself to it. Learn how to run experiments. 2009. UrbanPackRat.com, PassionateFriday.com, and BusinessCreditMentor.com. So I had all those things running concurrently. And I read this blog post, and it was just, and it wasn't even a blog post. It was a comment on the blog post. And the guy said, it isn't that hard to make money online. This is what you do. You pick three blogs, you run them, whichever blog is the best, and you have a $25 product. So if you sell 2,000 of that product in a year, at 60 grand. I mean, that's, yeah, that's 50 grand. That's where I got my business model from, from that blog post. And it worked. <laughs> it totally worked. So run a bunch of little experiments and figure out which experiment runs better or is heads and shoulders above you. When science fiction becomes science fact, that's exactly where we are. I mean, think about if I don't know if people's great grandmothers or yeah, they might be. Let's just say you're no, not your great grandmother. If you got kids, maybe your great grandmother. Go talk to a 95 year old and ask them about this stuff and just wash their eyes light up because it's like they're like living their science fiction. People are 90 some years. So yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, David Boyd, isn't that kind of like when you in certain ads show up in your Facebook feeds or the Google ads that show up in next year's search? They're just using cookies. Yeah, that's called retarget retargeting, um, and it's a pixel. Uh, Jay Jones, how do you feel about the Shopify movement? A lot of people drop shipping using targeted ads from FB. How do I feel about that? Well, I got a rule. I think I did the video on drop shipping. So I got the thing with um, that. I don't really know. I don't do it. You know, there's a lot of people doing it. There's a lot of people selling the course. But from what I know about selling online, and I've sold thousands and thousands of physical products online using eBay, Amazon, my own websites, um, I think it's a money game. If you've got the money, I think it can work, but I also think it's dangerous. But I've seen a lot of people talk about it, but I have not seen the dropshipping billionaire. I haven't even seen the dropshipping millionaire. And there's a lot of people who have dropshipping channels on YouTube. And I, every now and then I'll check them, and I've noticed that their standard of living hasn't changed. I don't care who you are. You make more money, it's going to be reflected in the house because everybody's not into cars. Or it's going to be reflected in travel if you're not in the houses and cars. Or it's going to be there's going to be something. There's going to be something. You making two million dollars a year and you living in a hole? I don't think so. So I don't know. I really don't know. It's just uh, mysterious to me. But I guess it works for some people. I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to create any courses on it. I'll teach you how to negotiate with a bigger company that will actually, you know. The, if you've got enough money or enough benefit, let's just say Napa Auto Parts, right? And you got this website. You go to Napa and say, look, I sell a million dollars a month in auto parts, and I want to drop ship your parts. They're going to be like, hell yeah. They'll create, they'll give you your own person and everything. You know, try it out. Yeah, the whole thing with drop shipping is trying to remove the risk of buying products that in, if they don't sell, you know, you don't sell them until they actually sell, sell. But... It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. It should be fun. But yeah, the whole thing is learn how to build businesses and learn how to treat people. Because this is one of the things, because you know, someone was talking about how long these streams are. And I didn't even respond to the comment. I was like, you know, there are people here, because right now there's a bunch of people here. 
Let's see, Chanty Wolf. Adrian Morrison makes millions because he's mastered Facebook. Who's Adrian Morrison? Y'all, and y'all educate the hell out of me here because I've never heard of these people. Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> Shopify millions is what I meant. Well, it says on this website that you know he does FB FBS training, which is a very big business. Um, anyone who's doing marketing training, like a digital marketer, I think they did like fifty million last year, maybe thirty six to fifty million. So there's selling marketing techniques and services to people who needs marketing is huge because they're, I need marketing services. Uh, all of you who are selling stuff online need marketing services. You need to either you need to learn how to market or you can buy the service. So it's a huge vertical. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to address the whole thing with the scam artist because like I said, I did a cursory um, review. I don't know what he has or hasn't done until uh, Shanti Wolf mentioned him in the stream. I didn't know, even know who he was. I'm real careful with that because a lot of people like to throw around the S word for scam. They don't understand. I don't know. Uh, you know, but do more research because people are suing people for that stuff online now like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Comfort zones video. Professor G, Tiff degree, black belt, ninja truth speaker. That's funny. How much would you charge a local business to get them up and running online and see you advertise the social media? Whatever you can get. Uh, Leroy, I tried drop shipping and it's very tricky. Be careful of logistic issues. Remember to account supply delays, okay? It seems like everyone is selling uh, shovels to gold miners these days. Pretty much. I mean, that's the marketing thing. It really is. I mean, it's the reality. He's not lying. Why do you think so many people are on the FB ads thing? Because it's everybody who wants to quote sell certain things wants to use FB ads. So, um, matter of fact, I'm going to give you, let's see, hold on a second. From my research, and I don't know if it's valid enough, it may help you, it may not help you, but look at this guy. <clears throat> It should be here. We go for anybody who wants to do Facebook ads. This guy's got a podcast. Go to his podcast. I don't know him. I've just learned a lot of stuff, and I've confirmed some things I already knew with him. So for me, just me, he seems to be the most legit person that I know in this space of teaching how to do FB ads, F Facebook ads. This guy. Uh, he's a regular guy. He makes good money. He works hard, but he, you know, he ain't making millions. <laughs> this is, there's just a lot more to it. Uh, but he has a lot of customers and I think he really likes doing what he does. I kind of get this sense from his podcast, the art of paid traffic, check him out, make your own determinations. But my opinion, this is one of the straighter shooters in this game. So that's just a, my opinion. But you can check him out, you know, for the Facebook folks. Deborah Johnson, Pat Flynn is the best. He shares how much he worked. Folks just don't pay attention. He still works a lot now. Actually, Deborah, I disagree with you. I listened to Pat in the beginning. He used to say he only worked four hours a day, and so he spent most of the time with his kids, which I thought was bullshit when he said it. I can go to the podcast and point that out. He may, maybe he's gotten called out on that because uh, maybe he's working harder now, but in the beginning, uh-uh. No, 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 no. No, it was just like you got to be. We kind of started the same way. He had, he he's an architect, and he had to take the leads exam. And he did a blog for the leads exam, and that's how he made. That was his first info product, and that's how he got put on. He didn't do that like in four hours a day. <laughs> uh, D Hectorix, what is your opinion of FX and sales? For example, using marketing to sell inferior quality items for a premium price. I'm going to say something that may be surprising. And I actually put this in a group the other night. Really good marketing can sell a course or a product 
that's less, you know, inferior than someone else's product and make way more money. Uh, I call it the Microsoft effect. Microsoft, we all use Windows 95. Now, everybody that use old Microsoft, you know, products, put a, a 10 in the comments. And everybody that had a problem with Windows early products put a five in the comments. You know, for your, your ethics and sales. Just go ahead and put that in there. Now, the reason I use Microsoft and, you know, I'll, you know, my first book was from an information standpoint. It was gold. It was platinum. From a editing and typo standpoint, it was garbage. I made $62,000 for that book. And I kept marketing it and pushing it while I fixed it. <laughs> so let's see. So let's see. Uh, We'll kind of go down a little bit because I'm going to move around. We got a bunch of 10s, 10s, 5s, 5s, 5s. See, the whole thing is Microsoft for decades put out flawed products, and Bill Gates is the world's richest man at $81 billion. So part of this thing is if you got a product that helps people, whether it's flawed or not, I think you should push it as hard as you can. If someone over there with a better product but they don't know marketing, that is their fallacy. See, the marketplace is like the jungle. If you can outrun that line, you live another day. If you a little, if you you lost a step, you're fucking dinner. That's the world. That's the world. There's a lot of people who are what I call uh, uh, these uh, Don Quixote, Don Quixotes who go tilting at windmills or trying to warn people about scam artists. Essentially, everybody's got to do their own work. That that's my opinion. So. If your product does what it says it does, market the shit out of it. If it doesn't do it as better as this product, that's their problem. That's how I look at it. Uh, Kirk Johnson, you think, do people have a portion of their online business offline? For example, I sell tools. Would it make sense to cultivate customers through the direct mail? Just depends. Do your people buy tools from direct mails? When you're Doing all of this stuff and putting together your things, you need to understand the behavior of your customer. If your customers are older, because the older people skew for direct mail, okay, excuse me. But if your customer is younger, they're not going to pay attention to direct mail flyers. You're going to throw that shit in the trash. So it just depends. Who's your customer? Uh, Kingfoot, so in 10 years, aren't we kind of screwed that everyone can't run a blog and successful YouTube channel? I'm thinking the goal is to wait for the next social media giant and go hard. Kingflip, bad, bad, bad plan. You're right. Everyone can't have a successful YouTube channel. Everyone can't have a successful blog, but everyone can create a product or buy service, buy products and flip them. And marketing is going to be some. And the thing about being screwed. If you do a YouTube channel, like I can look at where YouTube is going. YouTube is kind of going back to the beginning, except they've added some extra things because, you know, for your videos to be viewed, they need to be about what you're talking about, which is why I don't let people divert the stream into other tangents. And you need to do the work of building an audience in not one place with several. That's it. That's the big difference. You can't get by just on the YouTube audience. You have to build audiences in other places. You have to have an email list. So if you're gonna do some, you 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 can't. If you wait, you're gonna you're gonna miss so much by waiting that it's ridiculous. I want to move a lot of my sales offline. So much has potential when you get people away from the noise. Um, here's a fact for you. Look it up. Eighty-five to ninety percent of all commerce is done offline. And of the eight, nine or 12 percent, whatever it is, Amazon has half and then it's all the rest of us. Amazon has half. That's why everyone knows Amazon. So selling stuff offline is a good move, man. I don't know a lot about digital market. I've heard about it. Um, he doesn't seem as um, hustler pornish as a lot of me. And he seems more like a button down business person, but I don't know a lot about it. I'm looking at this 10, five. So many people bought Microsoft products, had issues. Now, everybody that 
did a 10 or a 5, who bought Microsoft products, had issues, put a 3 in the comments if you bought more Microsoft products after the first ones were screwed. Uh, King Flip, Apple's entire business model is inferior products with fantastic marketing. Uh, two years ago, I would have disagreed with you, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I made a video while I'm not buying their new stuff. So I, I can't I can't deny that. And you and they're like in the top 20 companies in the world. Uh, Leroy Gesturing, Pat Flynn got a lot of backlash about Paradise Entrepreneur. He really makes money writing, makes money writing books and speaking. Uh, what is Paradise Entrepreneur? I haven't listened to Pat Flynn in about two or three years. That I know he's always made his money from affiliate marketing. That's why he could give away his stuff for free. <laughs> he, he never made money selling it. Uh, Chante, well, if you're starting out online, should you reinvest all your profits in the first months, first six months? Here's my thing. What's your goal? How fast, how big do you want your business to go? You know, if you are having an online business, it does a thousand bucks a month, keep your job. And yeah, and then some of these businesses, you don't have to reverse invest all your profits. So it just kind of depends on what money, how much money you're making, what your goals are, what you're selling, what the marketplace, so there's a lot of variables. There's somebody out there like, let's say you, you write an ebook and your first month you make 10 grand. What are you gonna be reinvesting in? Make a better website? I mean, you know, it just really depends. Look at all the people who bought Microsoft's flawed products and bought more. Now, the lesson there, boys and girls, is you, your product doesn't have to be perfect to make you a billionaire. That's the lesson. If it works, because here's the thing, Microsoft products work, they just had a lot of uh, issues. I remember having to defrag my hard drive and all this other stuff. They worked, but there was a lot of issues, there was a lot of bugs, there was a lot of patches, there was a lot of updates, but we continue. I mean, I've bought, I don't know how many uh, Microsoft products, six, seven, eight, I don't, I don't know. So, but they were flawed and I knew they were flawed. And you, when it would come out, you'd be like, oh God, let's hope Windows is stable this time. And you had just dropped 1600, uh, maybe $2,000 on a, pers a PC and you were hoping it would work. But people are talking about, your product needs to be perfect. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, let's see. Uh, I just moved straight to Linux three using three five six now. I meant Benjamin weekly defract and scan disk. Yeah. So here's a lesson: your stuff doesn't have to be pro perfect to make you a billionaire. And this is why when you know people got on me, I just kept putting my shit out there, kept putting my shit out there because my goal wasn't perfection. My first goal was to serve people, to give them information they needed. And my second goal was to get money, and that's what happened. Uh, they're also creating a lot of work for on-site support folks. <laughs> I mean, I haven't used Windows products since 2010. A moonlight, a grew tired of crashes and virus infections. I, I didn't even, it's been so long that I haven't even, I didn't even get to, I didn't even put that in there. Now a Mac user and love it. Yeah, so you know, this is the whole thing. Yeah, you gotta let perfection go. That, that that's that's a fool's errand. But like I said, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to make money online. And many people are, like I said, get those two books I mentioned earlier and start building your tribe the correct way because this is the thing. I got people in my tribe who bought every product that I've bought. So my cost of acquiring new customers goes down. You get a customer, they buy, they buy, they buy. You make a lot of money. But if you're like hopping all over the place, your money goes down. King Flip, you, could, you think you could still make a lot of money starting a new tech, new tech channel with affiliate marketing? 5K plus a month, there's a lot of overlooked products, but my click-through rate is currently isn't crazy. Uh, starting a YouTube channel really depends upon marketing 
outside of YouTube. And a lot of people don't know that. That's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, a guy started a channel this year. He's already up to 250,000 subscribers. He started that channel this year, a tech channel. Uh, he's, um, well, he's a Hispanic dude. And he's got really, and there's another guy, another Asian guy. He started one not even a year ago. He's at 300 some thousand subscribers. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Plenty of room. Clown, when you see how many vehicles street recall is, is in the office, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, for many people who are online space, they're shooting for perfection. They're shooting for perfection. Uh, they become paralyzed when they don't have perfection. And um, it gets to be crazy. So that's just kind of my rant right there because, you know, I'm quite sure I will have to use all of my forces of willpower not to jump back in the conversation to argue with people who are arguing against things I know to be true based upon how they feel. So for those of you who want the Never Broke Action Pack, going to teach you how to make money, save money, manage money, fix your money, fix your credit and stuff like that. Because here's the deal. You start a business to make more money, but you have bad money management habits. You're going to end up in the same janky spot you're in right now. So that's why you should get the Never Broke Action Pack. All right. Let's see. I'm going to answer a few more questions. Then I'm going to bounce. Oh, there are not. <laughs> there are no more questions. So with that, I will see you guys in the next stream. Also, one thing. Subscribe to the Hustler Kung Fu Live thread. I mean, Hustler Kung Fu Live uh, email list is right under the Never Broke Action Pack. And you know, next year I'm going to start sending out uh, emails about the stream, so you'll be first to know. And I'm going to put some goodies on that email list for the folks there. And that's the only email list I have. I got rid of all the other ones. If you could see the video yesterday, I deleted that one, and I got some other ones I really don't use. I'm starting anew. Let's see. When you realize how quickly people dislike or post negative comments on something you worked hours on, you learn to do it and move on quickly. Uh, I mean, I, I get people who will dislike a video that's 30 minutes long and it came out like two minutes ago. I don't even pay those people any attention. I mean, it's just somebody who's I don't know, bored or whatever. And also, YouTube doesn't take that stuff into account. So all those likes and stuff from a social narrative standpoint, if you know, vanity metrics, it looks, ooh, it looks good, it looks bad. YouTube does not take that stuff into account because it can be gained. You can go hire somebody in Sri Lanka to sit at their computer all day, like, 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 like. <laughs> this still didn't work. Uh, what's your opinion on paying for someone else's email list to generate web traffic leads and sales? Well, if what you selling fits what that list was built on. It'll, it'll work. Uh, let's call it joint venture partnership. They introduce you to their list and it's like, hey, you know, and then you get a, they click on it and they get a little cut. <clears throat> Happens all day long. In fact, it's how the biggest people make most of their money, working with other folks with other lists. All right, well, that's it. I'm on the bounce. Like I said, be sure to subscribe, like, and share. Share this on Facebook. Let your friends know if you care about them. If you don't care about them, um, I understand. I'm out.